You know how there's times when nothing goes right and you just keep clawing and fighting and like you just you're trying to plug the holes in the dam, right? And and you keep on trying to throw new things at it. Just just constantly desperately trying to fix it. And yet it just doesn't get better. And the only way that it does is when you stack enough, to borrow a phrase from Mike McCarthy, staff enough success, right? Because along the way, there's going to be some little things that you do that show that you're on the right track, but then you just get slapped in the face again and it comes right back. But then you, you have one victory and then you have another and another and, and you build until you're out of it. It's quicksand. Kind of in a nutshell describes the 2022 Green Bay Packers. It also describes my internet connection this week. Welcome to another episode of Lombardi Time Brews. I am your host, John Delray. Sorry for this episode coming out on Thursday, as I alluded to in the intro. Yeah, my, I, I don't know, guys, right? Like, when it rains, it pours, and my furnace went out a few weeks ago now. Like, <laughs> just my internet connection's been awful as of late, and it kind of hit ahead yesterday. I think we're on the straight and clear now. I think it's getting better, so uh, welcome. Welcome to another episode. So, um, today I'm going to be going over injury updates for the Green Bay Packers who practiced on this beautiful Thursday, who did not. Uh, we're also going to be talking and checking in on, uh, about two weeks ago I listed off the players that, in a lost season, who am I most looking forward to watching? And so I got a little, little update post-Philadelphia game about how each one of them did, if we're still waiting, etc. So let's dive right in. I do want to make today kind of a quicker video, especially given my internet. Who knows how long this is going to take to upload. So uh, just want to check check in, touch base, uh, go over today's news, and then just see how those, see how the youngins are doing. So first of all, injuries on this Thursday. Uh, Packers were back on the practice field today. Few notable names were practicing, including rookie sensation wide receiver, instantaneous Hall of Famer, Romeo Dobbs. He returned to practice yesterday. He was a limited participant again today. Are we going to see him on the field on Sunday against Chicago so we can actually see Watson and Dobbs together? Hopefully, I'm going to talk about why that connection is important in just a minute. But for the rest of the limited practice, practice participants, <laughs> sorry, we have David Bakhtiari, Devondre Campbell, A.J. Dillon, Romeo Dobbs, Elton Jenkins, Aaron Jones, and Aaron Rodgers. All of them limited today. All of them certainly on track to play this Sunday, the question mark being on Dobbs. And then we did have two did not practices. That would be Mercedes Lewis. No injury was designated, so probably is a vet rest day for Big Dog. And then Darnell Savage. Certainly not a surprise given his foot injury, even though x-rays were clear. So diving into the actual content of the day, these players that I listed off a couple weeks ago, um, guys that... I was just excited for one reason or another as the season's coming to a close. You know, we got this lost season. Who are guys that could potentially have impact on the future? Who are guys um, that you just want to watch, right? For whatever reason. And so, number one, I had Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs. Now, we are another game into Christian Watson's career, and holy goodness. You know, I, I said in that video a couple weeks ago that the number one thing that I wanted to see from Christian Watson before the year was out was I wanted to see a game where he's not just getting like 30 yards a catch. I want to see a complete game from him. Meaning one of those totally typical De DeAndre Hopkins, Devontae Adams type games. Just one. Where it's like 12 catches, 140 yards. Like the ball just always finds him. Not just when he's streaking open, right? Well, he didn't do that against Philly. But here's the cool thing. The traits are absolutely there. Darius Slay, the Philadelphia corner, said in his podcast that, you know, Christian Watson, like, he, he beat the angles, right? We all know a play I'm talking about, the, the very long touchdown. He beat the angles of the Philadelphia defenders. 
And then Darius Slay went on to say that, well, you can only beat Angles if you are fast, fast. Well, you're seeing Watson's route running improve. You're seeing him do more in the offense week by week. And now it's not just straight line speed. Not that he always just had straight line speed, but it's probably what we saw the most. Now it's beginning to change. It's creeping in other places. That's really cool. It means that we're on the precipice of a complete superstar type game for Christian Watson. And then Romeo Dobbs. Now Dobbs and Watson have only seen the field together for 52 snaps so far this year. If he can come back, if he can come back any time here before the end of the year, regardless of who's quarterback, be it Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love, I want to see those two together. And then the question is, who's who's not going to be on the field to get Watson and Dobbs together? Because hard pressed to believe the Cobb's coming off, and well, Zard's your de facto number one who still does the dirty work. Going to be incredibly interesting to watch how they manage this once they actually have a full room given the ascension of Christian Watson. Number two, uh, Josiah DeGuara. Yeah, I still want to see more Josiah DeGuara. In fact, it went the wrong way in the Philadelphia game. I was saying he's been blocking well, he's been doing well, I want to see more snaps. And then all of a sudden in the Philadelphia game, he got 14 snaps. 14. You know who had nine? Tyler Davis. Josiah DeGuara should be higher on the depth chart compared to Tyler Davis than more than just five snaps. And I'm not even a complete Tyler Davis hater like there's so many out there. But, you know, we know per Rogers post-game press conference that Tyler Davis ran the wrong route and that led to the interception. We just, I, I just don't see why Josiah DeGuara doesn't get to play more. Robert Tunyon is amongst the team leads in receptions, but... It doesn't go anywhere whenever he gets the ball anymore. And I know they use DeGuara predominantly as an H-back, which lends itself only to certain packages, but just, I don't know. Like I said a couple weeks ago, he's the only tight end really amongst this that you can bank on the fact that there's more years left on the contract and he's going to be here for more than just this year. Can't say that about Tunyon. Can't say that about Lewis. Don't know if you want to say that about Tyler Davis. To, To play him as a tight end. See what happens. In terms of total snaps and like the whole three facets of the game, Tyler Davis actually had more. Tyler Davis had nine offensive snaps and 24 special team snaps, whereas Josiah DeGuara had 14 offensive snaps and 11 special team snaps. DeGuara's the better player. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is a question. So like, play him, please. Number three, new practice squad edition, D.D. Westbrook. Yeah, I... I like D.D. <laughs> I have always liked D.D. Westbrook as a wide receiver. As a punt returner, he's more accomplished than anyone else even on the, on the roster. And he's still just sitting there on the practice squad. He's still just chilling. Rich Bisaccia, in his press conference today, said that Keyshawn Nixon is going to get every opportunity to earn the punt return job. I have made it known in the last couple of weeks I like Nixon a lot as a kick returner. Some of his technique as a punt returner is wildly concerning to me. And Bisaccia did acknowledge that what they are working on with Nixon is decision-making. That it's a little different for every game, depending on who they're facing, how well the blocking is going. And they need to work on that with Nixon, but they have complete faith that he'll get it. Great. I still don't like the way that he always catches the ball a punt returner. I, I just don't. And that's not a knock on him. Kick returning and punt returning are very different skills. Every NFL player will tell you that. They are very different roles for a reason. I'm fine with Nixon a kick returner, but you, you've got D.D. Westbrook, and unless he's completely fallen off a cliff, which I'm hard-pressed to believe considering he was Minnesota's punt returner last year, give him a shot. I, I wouldn't mind him at all being in the rotation for punt returner. So, still waiting. Jury's out. Number four, we switch to the defensive side of the ball, Devontae Wyatt. And look, John Meerdink of, uh, of the Power Sweep, uh, the Blue 58 podcast, talked this week about... Kenny Clark playing more at nose tackle this year than he did it last year. And one of the thinking coming into this year by adding Jerron Reed, retaining Dean Lowry, drafting Devontae White, is that Kenny Clark would be able to play on the end more where everyone feels he can be more disruptive. Like he was last year. But yet this year, they're playing him at nose more. And and realistically, Meerdink continued to explore the numbers and break down. It's probably about six to eight snaps worth more. Why? 
Like, why? I, I just don't get it. It just feels like another instance of the defense using an ultra-talented player in a way that they're not best suited. And, and you know, you've got Dean Lowry, who can only play end. He can't play nose tackle. TJ Slayton can play nose tackle and has played pretty well. So let him play and get Clark over to end. I just, I don't understand the insistence upon making sure that Dean Lowry gets snaps. And the same can be said at times for Jerron Reed. So here's the snap totals from the defensive line. Now, Devontae Wyatt did get an uptick this week. He played 20 snaps on the defensive line. But that still was the fewest of all the defensive linemen in the rotation. Next up was TJ Slayton at 27. Dean Lowry, 39. Jerron Reed, 46. And then Kenny Clark at 57. I mean, can we knock, can we knock Lowry and Reed down a little bit? Maybe give some more to Slayton and Lowry? Clark on the end? Or I, I'm sorry, not Slayton and Lowry. Move Reed and Lowry down. Move Slayton and Wyatt up. And then have Kenny Clark at end. Please, try it. See how it goes. See what you got in the guy, in the 24 defensive lineman, 24-year-old defensive lineman that you invested a first-round pick in. Uh, see what he's got. By the way, side note, yes, they did restructure Dean Lowry's contract. Gives him an additional a little over a million dollars to play with right now. Why, I'm not quite sure. It did add dead cap in future years for Dean Lowry over amongst the void years that are already on his contract. Chances are Dean Lowry is not coming back next year. So again, later youngins. Number five, Kinsley Anigbare. Um, Yeah, no, he's... He's been great. I love watching him go. He is a spark plug of effort and, and intensity. Um, he's done some nice things against the run, too. He still needs to add some strength, but he is getting better against the run. To the point where I saw some conjecture online this week, specifically Twitter, about is he playing so well that Preston Smith suddenly becomes expendable given the cap issues next year? Whoa. Like, that's... That's... That's a lot. I don't know as if I'd go that far yet. I still like Preston Smith. Yes, he has his ups and downs. It's been well documented. But he's still Preston Smith. And I know Anagbari, I, I'm ready to label him with the special tag, that he is a special draft pick, that he's a very bright future. But I would love to see one complete year next year of him as a pro with Rashawn Gary and Preston Smith ahead. Almost the Rashawn Gary plan that they had when they had Z and Preston. It was always going to be at least two years of Z and Preston with Gary as the number three, and I kind of want to see that one more year before I'm ready to crown adding Barre as full-on star at the edge position that we can get rid of Preston Smith. Number six, two old guys, Mason Crosby and Randall Cobb. Yes, absolutely. Continue. Continue appreciating them. Um, Mason Crosby missed an extra point this last week. Um, you know, appreciate them. I've said quite a bit about them that and i'll leave it at that now jordan love he's the next one and yep 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 very excited to see jordan love play now aaron Rodgers is going to play against the bears this coming sunday and there is a beautiful poetry no doubt about it a beautiful poetry about the bears and the packers being all-time tied in the wins category most wins for any franchise in nfl history bears and packers are tied and there is a beautiful beautiful story about Aaron Rodgers going into Soldier Field to take the all-time franchise lead and wins. This isn't head-to-head. -head. This is all of it. To see Aaron Rodgers take it in Soldier Field. Yeah, you just, you can't write a better script than that. But after the bye, after the Bears game, see then, and I think there's some questions. And even Aaron Rodgers acknowledged yesterday that he'd be open to the conversation about Benching, or not benching, about him sitting out, probably going on Phantom IR, so that Jordan Love can take over for the final four games. I'm in that camp. They got to see what Jordan Love can do sometime. They have to, be it to up his trade value, be it to assess his trade value, be it to assess the fifth-year option, be it to assess whether he's the future or not. I'm not going to project right now. I have my opinions, but right now I'm not going to project as to which of those options are. But nonetheless, in order to do any of them, you have to see Jordan Love play. And in a lost season, when Rodgers is banged up to high hell, let him take the all-time lead in the, in the wins category in Soldier Field and then see where it goes. 
And you know what? Based upon how we played, I'm so excited to watch Jordan Love play football. Just give us more to assess. Learn about him as a quarterback. Watch him come into his own. Now, I am going to add one this week. We now have checked in on everyone that I'm really excited to watch. But I'm going to add one. Safety, Rudy Ford. In the last three weeks, two of the last three games, Rudy Ford has been the highest graded defender of the Green Bay Packers on PFF. Two of the last three weeks. And the grades aren't small either. They're like elite level grades. And then the one week where he wasn't the highest, he happened to be the lowest of all the defensive starters. So it is what it is, but I, he brings, kind of like any bar, he brings an energy, he brings a spark to a defense that desperately needs it. And if Rudy Ford can close out the year playing how he's been playing, he had six tackles, three assists against Philly in a game where they lost, where they missed 22 tackles. But... I mean, if he can be that guy, right? If he can be a capable starter, if he can continue to grade out in a high way for the rest of the season, did they find themselves a starting safety by accident for next year? I mean, it's Kyle and Razul Douglas all over again, right? Different circumstances, sure, but a guy that you don't project to to embody a role suddenly just kind of takes it. So I'm very excited to watch Rudy Ford over these final few games to see if he can take that job, make it his next year. You know, no matter what, most metrics now have the Green Bay Packers at a 2% chance of making the playoffs. Even if they win out, if they win every game, run the table like 2016, if they win every single game, most metrics then put their chances at 48%. So even if they win out, They don't even have more than a 50% chance of making the playoffs. But you know what we all can do? Still find the good to watch. And for me, it's this list. What, the 10, 11 guys that I've got. Be it appreciating the old ones, be it watching with a hopeful eye for the young ones. Or just seeing how some stuff plays out what we do it for right to watch to learn and to love our green bay packers so that's it for today i do hope you had a wonderful day today hoping this actually uploads with any type of speed whatsoever (laughs) we'll find out shortly so thank you for checking out lombardi time brews i hope you have an absolutely wonderful night and as always go pack go